detach in our mind from those false thoughts, from the attack thoughts. And we'll be able to see it, just calmly see the false as false. But that's one of the stages kind of that we go through. Once it starts coming up and you start working with this book, it's like there's a real tendency to want to uh, project or be the unhealed healer. Jesus yeah. calls it the unhealed yeah. healer. The one to go around and, yeah. and, and, and get healing without ha having healing ourselves. And it's, you know, just to watch ourselves do this, you know, and go through it. It's really something. Oh, yeah. I had him and the therapist and everybody else heal. <laughs> and I wasn't. Yeah. There was a man here in, in Jackson a while back that um, talked about uh, there is no compromise. And um, that's the part that I want to do at the family level. Um, I mean, how else is a 15-year-old and a 12-year-old going to know things if I don't tell them, if I don't compromise this course and make sure I bring it out? And uh, I keep referring back to, to his thing, it's just plain no compromise. And in the family level, I have the, uh, that's the hardest part for me to work it, mm -hmm. you know, with my children and with my wife. We just went, when we were up at Traverse City, we just went into that pretty deeply because those were a lot of the issues that were coming up of how, as a parent, you know, I need to, to set limits when, we had actually repeated again last night where a gentleman was saying, you know, I have a son and he's got a duty to clean the bathroom and he doesn't, I, I suggest, I remind, it's just filthy. I look at the bathroom, I start to get angry, you know, just describing this whole dynamic. And what, what we've kind of been going into is, once again, it's these self-concepts, that the parent is another role, and, and there's lots of unconscious stuff down there about good mom and good dad. Good moms do it, good dads do it this way. We have these, these unconscious beliefs that are down there. And what happens is, the basic situation is, is kind of like with parents and children a lot of times, there's a, there can be a big control struggle. Not just with parents and kids, it can be in relationships, <laughs> all kinds of relationships, but, but there can be a big control struggle where it seems to be a battle of egos, um, where the world is kind of teaching you've got to help tame and train this ego to at least adapt and become somewhat normal to function, you know. They have to, you have to learn that there's things that you have to do in life. And you can always tell when you're sliding into ego, it's the, it's the control feeling and the tone of voice. When the demanding and the commanding starts coming out. You know, I, I think of the, the Course and, the Holy, and Jesus saying that the Holy Spirit never commands and never demands. He always reminds and suggests. Well, right away, the... Up, he was in Toth High School. <laughs> <laughs> and right away, the options will come to... Right, with, with certain situations or for certain children, like, wait a minute, I've, I've reminded and suggested to a certain point, then I've got to really... <laughs> I've got to bear down here, you know, and this and that. But really, it's always our own lesson. I mean, the children are, are those great mirrors again, you know, that whenever we start feeling we're off the beacon, whenever we start feeling controlling or angry, it's kind of like if you can pull back to a level of spirit or a mind level, it's kind of like, what's the deal? We're equals here, you know? Did you forget? There's just these roles now, you know? They're, but you see how, wait a minute, those are, this is the role, I am the dad. You are the son or you are the daughter. You know, <coughs> as soon as the mind clicks into I am the role, you know, then you, the control comes in because there aren't any roles in heaven. Now, what, say that again. That, is that bad? Yeah. It, it's clicking into ego because oh, okay, okay. Because yeah, we, we get so yeah. lined into that whole that role okay, that you're saying it was good. that those expectations take over, and we have expectations then of our brother. It's kind of like I'm in this role and you're in this role and we're in this role thing together. But that isn't. I mean, it's an It may be an illusion, but it's also a fact. Well, what Course is saying is basically it's an interpretation. That the only fact is is that of that Christ or, or oneness. But within the dream world, these identities, these self concepts that we make up, include a lot of roles. Plus, fact, also, I'm, I'm sorry to enemy to jump in. The, th the thought that came to me was that we also have perceptions about what that means as far as our roles. Yes. And as a parent, or sometimes that's an issue that that's hard to to let go of when you're in that, when you get into that role. Because I need to do this, yeah. I need to do that. In the ultimate sense, the Course is saying that the, the real authority problem, it talks about like on page 43 in the Course, the authority problem is with God. Coming down to, did I, can I create myself or was I created, you know? And what happens is, 
is when I get into that, I can create myself, that's where the self-concept comes in. No, I can I, but I have. And part of it is I chose to go into whatever, be a parent, go to education, take this business job, this and that. So you can see where all these lessons that come up really are ways to start us to loosen our identification with these roles. And because all of our expectations that we place on our brothers that seem to be violated by their behaviors are really just expectations we're reading meaning onto the situation from our own role. And being identified as a male, being identified, you know, even as a Course in Miracles, if I identify myself as a Course in Miracles teacher, and people, and I perceive somebody as trying to weaken my position, then here it goes again. I've got another concept or construct that I have to let go of, because I'm still, as long as there's a defensiveness or, or fear or anything that's uncomfortable within us, we're still clinging to some kind of role or some kind of a concept that we believe is more valuable than the truth. That's really interesting because I know Tom struggles with it, but both of us has even, I'm only like 40 lessons into the course, but it's like you had to wear two different hats. I mean, you wore this, the Course in Miracles hat and you applied it to your life, but when it came to your kids, you had to put on a different hat because they have certain rules and, and regulations they need to follow in order to get where they need, where we think they need to get to. Yeah. And, I mean, we've talked about it in our group meetings even, you know, when do you apply the whole course to your whole life, or do you apply it to, you know, when you become a parent, or when are you the third person you're supposed to be trying to become? And it was, it was really difficult trying to cross over that fine line yeah. of when you're, it's okay to do it and when it's not. So it's better just to not compromise it like Thompson. Don't compromise yeah. it at all and work it, <laughs> <laughs> work it, you know, in our whole yeah. family life. It's this thing about judgment that, that Jesus says in the Course that you believe that without the ego all would be chaos. But he says, I assure you, without the ego all would be love. See, when the mind had these dark beliefs in it, and there was all this seeming horror and chaos, when it seemed to buy into the belief of separation, that all this judgment is a, is a way to try to bring some control and order into the chaos. And, and this is addressed, if you want to go back to the book, it's addressed at page 273 in the, in the text, where he's talking about ordering of thoughts, where he says, but you've literally limited yourself by all these judgments and orderings. That, that it takes a lot of trust to let go of, like you're talking about these ideas and beliefs about letting go of these constraints and restrictions and judgments about my children. Because the underlying belief is, if I let go of that, they're they're, be. all hell's going to break loose, yeah. you know? And they're going to grow up, and what a reflection on us to have <laughs> wild children, you know? I mean, you know, you see how it goes. The ego will just run with that. Yeah. And it does take a lot of trust to generalize this to your, to your family situation. If I'm going to insist in a classroom of, you know, 30 adolescents that, um, that they have something to complete and that I expect it completed, yeah. It's like watching your emotions and reactions. That's how we can tell yeah. whether we're listening Scary to the voice. Scary Yeah. And the thing about it is, the, the Course isn't a path of saying yes, yes, yes. I mean, there is a part in Absence from Felicity where, and it's been talked about before, like let your yay be yay and let your nay be nay, but, but be real clear that if that there's still egocentricity and codependency involved if we associate following the Holy Spirit with saying yes to everything and everyone. I mean, you can see how you can you just totally give away your sense of integrity. But that the Spirit's in there, and the Spirit, literally, if we, if we just stay with our emotions and we, we keep surrendering, that will, will tell us when to, to say yes, when to say no. When to maybe put down a guideline that could be helpful. You know, we can put down guidelines, but, that, but it's that insistent and demanding and commanding and the getting upset when they don't seem to follow it and everything, that the whole lesson for us is always to be extending the life and extending the peace. And it really does get at our own beliefs and expectations and roles. I mean, I see where that's the thing that's like always the lesson. What do I value in my mind? What am I holding on to that's more important than, than seeing the Christ in this person or child? And that's, a, that's the thought I just had was when you said seeing it. And um, the, I can think of... Uh, certain conflicts that I've had with, with my children 
and the thought came to me was, um, if I, if it gets to a conflict, then it's obviously something I'm not willing to, to see that's left to be seen. So I haven't given it enough time for that, for, for what it is that I need to see in this situation. So I said, so I lost patience and said, I'm not ready, I'm not willing to go that far. Let's just do this. Let's get into the conflict of it. And, and um, it's when I um, find that I just, if it's not there yet, then I just wait and, and then I can, I get the answer, so to speak. And then you, then you see it. So it's a matter of maybe it's just like that, taking that extra moment to wait for the, to see it. That's mm -hmm. what I thought. So, it, so in, in a situation maybe where, um, in a classroom situation, you, it's not necessarily to let it go. It's what do I need to, what do I need to see in this situation? What is, what is it in, uh, what do I need to hear about what it is I need to do next? And like you said, which I thought was great, but is this is this something that I can say yay about, or is this something I can say nay about? And be at peace with. Right. Either way, yeah. Mm -hmm. I think teachers have a really hard time because society puts so much role expectations on the teacher and what they're supposed to get out of each student, you know, in order to go from grade to grade. I mean, like Tom going in fourth grade just can't go in and say, well, all of us are going to learn what we're going to learn and hope we all do well, you know. I mean, there's certain standards that every kid has to do every year, you know, and he's got certain things he has to make them produce in order for them to get to the next year. So you can't just have that oh free will kind of attitude that you can in other in other jobs or other situations. It, it, it still starts to be more of one of those sneaky ego ploys that um, that that certain situations or certain people have it more difficult or easier and really what it does is it flies in the face of the first principle of miracles which is that there's no order of difficulty in miracles. And that's the hardest one, kind of like Jesus at some point in the Course said, if you could get the first one, you've got the whole Course. You don't even need the other 49 at the beginning, you know, it's just, it's a very basic one. But, but that's the basic ego strategy towards all kinds of conflicts, is it basically always says, if something were different in the world, or if the situation was different, or, if, you know, it always is trying to change something on the screen to bring about the peace. And, and the, the the mind is so resistant to just saying, oh, it just takes a change in my perception in the moment. But that's the one thing that the mind in the deceived state is so resistant to. And in the end, that's what the atonement is, to start to see there's nothing outside of me that can give me peace or take away my peace. To do that, though, you literally have to, um, I would say, just transcend the roles. They were asking, one guy they asked, one of these channel entities, I don't know if it was um, Samuel or... Uh, there's different ones and everything, but they kind of, the question posed to, to the gentleman was, um, it was kind of like, well, how, how can I be enlightened and still be in the corporate world? <laughs> you know, and, the, and the answer came back, you won't. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> kind of like, you know, that, that the deeper we go and the more we, we literally transcend the concepts that will be used in ways that we can't even fathom and foresee. But that, but what the ego does is it takes the current seeming concepts and situation and just kind of projects them out, you know, into the future. So it's, I see it as a path of just being present in the moment, whatever the situation is that you seem to be in, and, and using those opportunities, and then not getting too concerned about, about the next steps, or trying to figure out how is this ever going to work? Am I ever going to be a teacher? and be enlightened, or am I going to have kids, they used to ask Tara Singh, can you become enlightened and have children? <laughs> you know, okay. you know it, it keeps coming back to me, back to the compromise, I actually have less trouble in the classroom than I do at home, because I take it back home and say, you guys aren't going to be like those little sons. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, Dan hit me with that compromise, and then as I've been, you know, see, I, I wanted, I just want, you know, it's that, it, it, another word for it, I hear you say justification, or, you know, the, the defense, or whatever. Um, as I've kept going on here, and then hearing, you know, like I say, with these, all these different ones, Sales put it 
in our group really well. I've got to hear it. In, I got to hear it in my voice or your voice before I get you know.